Hi, I'm Jessica, and when I'm not drinking all the coffee, watching Razorback sports, or hanging out with my family of boys, it's my passion to help elementary music teachers just like you find your unique teaching style. My goal with this podcast is to share helpful tips, strategies, and to give you the motivation you need to gain momentum in your teaching so you can continue being the music teacher rock star you already are. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. You are listening to episode 96. And today we're going to talk all about how to integrate music and math. If you listen to episode 94, I talked all about reading integration in music and also with poetry and speech pieces. And I told you in that episode, I was going to do more episodes about integrating music into math, science, social studies, or history and foreign language. So today's episode is about math. Now this episode is not going to be very long, but it's going to be relevant and going to be um, giving you ideas of things you can implement into your classroom with your students, whether you're teaching virtually or in person. So the first thing I want to say is in the show notes, there is a blog post that goes right along with this episode called Music and Math Integration Ideas for Kids. Or you can simply head to thedomesticmusician.com, go all the way to the bottom at the search bar and just type in math. If you honestly, if you just type in math, you'll see this blog post come up or type in math integration. So let's talk about the simple ways to integrate math. I know a lot of you are asked by your administrators or even other teachers to do activities to help kids with learning concepts, especially when it comes to math. I want you to think back to when you were in elementary school. I know that was so long ago, but I know for me personally, learning songs, and yes, I'm a musician, but I've talked to a lot of people who aren't musicians, and music just helps you retain facts. Now, if you think about math, a lot of math is just memorization and facts where it used to be. I know the way math is taught now is way different, but that's a whole nother topic for another day. But the first thing I want to mention is about math facts. Okay, so what I'm talking about is When children learn about addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, for example, memorizing these facts is hard. And so saying math facts like a rap, it's repetitive. It helps children retain what they're learning, like I mentioned a minute ago. So for example, when they speak it like a rap, it's it's funner than honestly just spouting out answers like one at a time. Like if a teacher says, what's one times two? And then the class is like, two, what's two times four? Eight. I mean, it gets boring and kids are like, Ugh, I don't want to learn this, right? So instead, saying it like a rap, for example, the kids would say, one times two equals two. Two times four equals eight. Three times six equals 18. And see if they can just say it like that in a steady beat. Now, when you get to this point... Um, do it with the grade level that it's relevant to. Like you're not going to do the multiplication facts with kindergartners, obviously, right? Ask the teachers, what are you teaching your students right now? And then go with that. So do addition with the kids who are learning addition, multiplication with the kids learning multiplication, and so on and so forth. But also remember... You have to keep your special learners in mind because the special learners are not going to be able to keep up with the other kids. So you could modify it, absolutely, but they could just keep a steady beat or they could say the math facts and then the rest of the class could answer or you could even have the math facts and the answers already written on the board so everybody can say it together. So uh, you could also write, um, another way to make this musical is to write underneath like the two times four equals eight, you could put Uh, like a stick on the board or write the notes with the note stem and the note head for what the rhythm of that is. So two times two equals or two times four equals would be ta 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 titi or ti 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 tika or however you want to write it out. So you could show them, listen, even when we're speaking the raps together, we're also speaking it using certain rhythms and Each of these is a steady beat as well. They could pat the steady beat, they could clap the rhythm of what they're saying, and they can speak it by saying it like a rap. So I hope that that's helpful. Just with math facts, just speaking a rap, making it musical by keeping a steady beat, clapping the rhythm, makes it a lot more interesting for the kiddos to memorize their math facts. Now, 
one thing that is really cool is fractions. Now, music, you guys know, is already written with fractions. Like the time signature is what I'm getting at. Two, four, three, four, 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 six, eight, and all the other ones, you guys know what they are. But kids are learning about fractions. So when you get to the point where you're teaching them about time signature, showing them that, look, it's written just like a fraction, well, they'll be able to go, oh, and start connecting dots to how a fraction relates to a time signature. But on top of that, um, the top number tells musicians, you guys know what this, how many beats are in a measure, and the bottom number tells you guys or musicians what kind of note gets the steady beat. So when they're talking, you could also do like a comparison contrast lesson as well. So comparing what, when you're learning about fractions in math class, what does the top number tell you? What does the bottom number tell you? Well, in music, this is what the bottom number means and the top number means, but you could also compare the numbers to say, these these top numbers are similar because of this and different because of this. So just showing them actually that a fraction they're learning in math is used in a musical piece will help them form connections and say, oh, well, wow, that's awesome. There's already a fraction there without us even realizing. And of course, you're going to explain to them. You're not dividing it, right? It's not meaning there's three out of four parts you're using. It's a totally different idea, but just showing them it's written just like a fraction would be in math and how it's just explained differently will help them to form connections that way too. And then addition and subtraction. We talked about a little bit ago about math facts and memorizing math facts, but also with addition and subtraction, they can work on Um, forming which note in music gets a different number of beats and can be used in simple math problems. So for example, if you're writing down a quarter note and you're going to explain to your students that a quarter note gets one beat, well, what happens when you add it to a half note that gets two beats? Well, that would equal a dotted half note, which is three beats. So you can write out different rhythms like that or note values and have the kids add them or subtract them to come up with the answer of the missing note using whole notes, dotted half notes, half notes and quarter notes are probably the simplest way to do this. But you can even have like, you know, there's some math problems that have this plus this minus this plus this equals this. So it can be like a long math problem or a simple one that just has something plus something equals something. So basically all you're doing is using notes And then you're having the kids add the notes together to come up with what note is the answer and how many beats does that note get. And the teachers would actually love this idea too. You could say, hey, while you're working on addition and subtraction with your students, you can do it like this too because they're helping you with music and you're helping them with math and the kids are forming connections that way as well. So a simple way to help kiddos with addition and subtraction is just by having them add and subtract note values. It's really super simple, but it's really effective too because they start also connecting how many beats the notes get and are able to apply it to what you're learning or teaching them in music is what I'm trying to get at. The next thing you can do with um, integrating math and music is patterns. Now, In math, students learn about different patterns all the time. They may learn about shape patterns like triangle, triangle, square, circle. Triangle, triangle, square, circle. You know what I mean. When they see these math problems and it says what's missing in the pattern or what comes next in the pattern. So to practice math patterns in music, they can have a pattern like rest, quarter note, quarter note, rest, rest. Rest, quarter note, quarter note, rest, rest. And you can say... Same thing a math problem would do in math class is you're forming patterns or having them point out what's missing in the pattern together in music class. They'll begin to see how patterns not only happen in math and music, but with any other subject in the world around them. And so you could even do it with instruments. Hey, what's the missing instrument? You could even show them physically, say, drum, triangle, triangles, um, sand blocks, or drum, rhythm stick, xylophone, drum. And then have them say, what comes next in the pattern? Take one of the instruments away and tell, have them tell you what comes next. So just have them create different patterns like they would in math, but have them create the patterns in music class. And it will really help them start forming those connections with what they're learning in math 
and help them to really focus on what they're learning in math better too, because they'll be like, oh, wait, we did patterns in music. We're doing patterns again in math now. So I totally remember how to do this. You're honestly helping them learn math in music, which is in return, helping them take that back to class to learn math better too. And the last thing I want to name about how to integrate math and music is number order. Children practice arranging numbers from lowest to highest and highest to lowest. For example, if kiddos are learning 1 through 10, then they know to count up by 1s to 10. I mean, obviously, kids can learn to count by 5s, 10s, or whatever. But right now, we're just going to focus on counting by 1s. So they focus on counting by 1s all the way from 1 to 10 and down from 10 to 1, right? So to practice number order in music, students can arrange the notes from lowest sounding to highest sounding and highest sounding to lowest sounding. A good way to do this is simply head to the piano or use a mallet instrument, a xylophone, metallophone, glockenspiel, or whatever you have handy. And you can show them the low notes are down here on this side, the high notes are up here, and you go up one note at a time. And you can have them count while you're showing them lowest to highest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you could just do an octave or a full scale and go up by eight. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And have them count one to one, just like you would in math class. So like I said earlier, math helps with music and music helps with math, obviously. And you guys, there's so many studies, and this is not what this episode is about, but so many studies about how the math and music brain really use the same parts of the brain. Really, a lot of kids that are really great at music are really great at math. And it's so true. And so what better way to help them to and, and to encourage them to continue to hone their math skills than, than by helping them in music class, right? By integrating math and music. I think integrating all the subjects together with music really helps kids to form the connections on why music's important. And it helps kids to really retain what they're learning in the other subjects too. So I hope this was helpful. And if you are already integrating math and music with your students, I'd love to hear all about it. Just shoot me a direct message on Instagram at Jessica Peresta. You can always email me at Jessica at the domestic musician.com and just let me know how you're integrating math and music with your students. Hang in there and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for listening in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And while you're there, I would love for you to review the show and leave a rating on iTunes. To find out more about how I can help you gain momentum in your elementary music teaching career, head to thedomesticmusician.com where you'll find free downloads, courses, the blog, and so much more. Continue teaching music and never doubt the impact you're making each and every day in the lives of your students.